Hello internet! In this video we are going to be playing with our circle pixer, pixel shader again. Uh, the shader's done. There's, there's nothing else that I want to really do to it, but I kind of want to play around with some matrices. Um, so I, I, I'm hoping that we can introduce uh, rotation matrices into this equation somehow, I don't really know how yet, and get some cool effects. I don't know what the effects are going to be, and I don't really know where this is going to go. Uh, so we're going to just explore. Uh, if you're not familiar, this is our pixel shader. But instead of rendering pixels, it renders circles in their place and then uses the transparency, the alpha, of those pixels to select the radius of them. Uh, so that's a four part video series. You can go check it out. Uh, it's already done and uploaded and yeah. Uh, but this is sort of what it leaves you leaves you with. Uh, slight hint, uh, the code's on GitHub, so you, you can go and gra grab that. It's in the description as well, so if you want to pick that up. I don't know if this will end up there or not. It really depends on how this goes. Uh, but the general idea of a rotation matrix is if you have a point at 0, 0, a rotation matrix is not going to do anything. But if you have a point at, say, uh, one zero so way over here on this right side where my mouse is and if, if we assume that the center of this image like right here is our well actually there's a better way to better way to do this let's create a cube and put this in the center so this is our cube this is going to be like the center of our world and then if we were to add a sphere, for example, and move it one unit off to the side, or like five units, just so four units, so it's a little bit easier to see, you, you have a sphere over there. What a rotation matrix is going to do is allow us to rotate this. So as we, uh, not the Y, as we increase the Z axis, we can kind of move this around that. Our uh, whole thing, this whole shader that we're working with right now, is also using 2D coordinates. Uh, and so it's got an X and a Y coordinate and we can apply a rotation shader to that as well and hopefully get some cool effects. I don't really know how it's gonna look, but I figured it was worth a shot because theoretically um, what I'm hoping to get is pixels that are sideways. Uh, so we get sort of a diamond pattern instead of this square pattern, if that makes sense. I don't really know how to get there because this is not something I'm super familiar with. I've said that a few times already in this video, but I kind of want to iterate on this. This is a, a an exploratory video, uh, and so it's going to be a little bit different than some of the other stuff, uh, at least more exploratory than than some of the other other stuff we've done here. Uh, so I've created this circle pit pixel matrix shader, which is just currently a copy of the circle pixel shader, which you can find on GitHub. Uh, this one. If we were to apply it to our material, that's not how you do that. Like that, there we go. Nothing changes. Uh, that's because it's the exact same shader, which is good. That means it works. Uh, but I have left a little note here that says a 2D rotation matrix is equal to this. Uh, each of these have a degree in there somewhere. Uh, but effectively what you want to do is plug this in and multiply a 2D vector by this, and it will give you the rotated vector. That's sort of how that whole function works. So we need some sort of rotation amount. I don't know if this is going to be degrees or radians because I haven't actually checked, but we can explore and find that out. Uh, so we're going to be kind of messing with this. This probably is going to turn into some weird, some something weird, but uh, hopefully it's a fun kind of weird. Uh, so rotation amount, we'll give it a float and say it's equal to zero initially, uh, just so there's no initial rotation so nobody's getting confused uh, person getting confused would be me <laughs> but uh, let's see here do that add our rotation so we add the property we add the actual field and then in here we want to plug that rotation into each of these values so how do I make a, a 2d matrix I should look that up shouldn't I have uh, let's let's just try it so we want a float Oh, like that, two by two. Cool. Uh, equals our rotation, which is equal to float two by two. How do you do this? Uh, do we just give it two float twos? I don't really know the syntax for this. 
Let's just try this. Uh, so let's do one, 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 and one. Does that work? Or does that throw an error? Uh, unexpected, we need, need a semicolon. There we go. Okay, so that does work. Uh, that matrix is totally wrong. Uh, but I, I imagine that the way this is working is left to right. I do not actually know though. So we're going to have to find out because either this rotation matrix is going to work or it's not. Uh, the easy way to find this out actually should be to do something like this. Uh, so what I want is I want to get an identity matrix. Uh, and so the identity matrix is going to have a one and the diagonals across the matrix. So this value should be one and this value should be one. Uh, and that's not what this would do if we were going across. Uh, that would have both of these columns, or, or this first column would be ones. Uh, what I actually want is something like this. And so what, I'm, what should happen if I got this right uh, is I should be able to multiply our like something by that and we should get a, a meaningful value. So let's try plugging in. Well, actually, we don't need a lot of that. We can keep most of the code for now. Like it can run, but it's not actually going to do anything. Let's just do an albedo equals our uh, input dot uv main text dot x y and multiply that by our rotation matrix. Uh, I'm pretty sure rotation matrices are, or, or matrix multiplication in general is order dependent. So if, if you put it on one side, it'll do something different. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna see if I got that right. Type mismatch. Ah, because we're we're doing uh, <laughs> that. That's not gonna work, is it? Okay. Uh, so the reason this isn't working is this is a 2D vector, and we're trying to plug it into albedo, which is gonna expect three. Uh, so we can't we can't do that. Let's do a float two equals color. Oh whoa, what am I doing? Color equals that. O albedo equals our float. 3 of color dot x, color dot y, and 0. So if we did this right, this shouldn't modify our UVs, so we should get a single uh, red and green uh, gradient. If it doesn't work, or we get an error, I may need to flip these. Let's try that. <laughs> but if it doesn't work, actually, this isn't how you multiply matrices, is it? There's a multiply function for that. <laughs> okay, that explains a lot. There. All right. Well, I said it was going to be experimental, and uh, hey, it worked. Cool. Okay, so this is this is good. This means that we got our uh, rotation matrix or our our matrix working correctly. Let's just show you what that might have looked like if we had got it wrong. Uh, so this would scale our y to zero. Uh, because the way matrix multiplication works is, uh, well, at least the identity multiplication works, is if we take a 2D vector, the X is going to multiply across and hit this coat, this first uh, thing. And so if that's a 1, it becomes 1 uh, and stays the same because it's a multiplication. Uh, so the value, the value of the vector isn't changed. It, effectively, what this allows you to do is changing these diagonals will adjust the scale of something. Uh, so as we were to increase these, the uh, the scale would get bigger or, or smaller, depending on what we did. Uh, but because we're just keeping it at 1, it should keep everything the same. That's why it's called an identity matrix, because it's not actually changing anything. Uh, and so if I do this, our second uh, thing down here, I don't I don't really want to call it the cosine, because that's not what it is. Uh, but the this, this second pair or whatever is going to be zero which means our y coordinate is going to be multiplied by zero uh, so that becomes zero and then we just get nothing so we should see just one color why is it all the same that's odd okay so it has resulted in both our x and our y increasing in the same oh 
did I I rotate it by accident? I might have. That doesn't make sense. Uh, let's just make that a zero. So nothing crazy is going on. I'm imagining that that one is causing, there we go, <laughs> it's causing the problems. Uh, so in this case, we just get our X coordinate, which is gonna be the red coordinate. Uh, and so that, that seems to be working, that's good. And so we can change this now to be our cosine of our rotation. And then the negative sine of our rotation. And then the uh, sine of our rotation. And finally, the cosine of that again. And so that gets us our rotation matrix. And we should be multiplying that already. So what I should be able to do is get this and then increase this rotation. And we'll get this whole thing to rotate. Uh, and so what's actually happening here is we're moving this entire thing around this zero, zero point. Uh, just like we were doing with the objects again, uh, but this, this time we're doing it with a shader. So we're actually just moving the colors. Uh, so we could do some sort of cool wheel here. Uh, there's nothing on the backside because these are negative values. Uh, that's just sort of the way that works. Uh, but it seems like we're working with radians. Yeah, looks like it. Okay, good to know. Uh, is there a way we can make that a little bit nicer? I'd like to work with degrees, uh, just because uh, I'm more familiar with them. So float uh, rotation equals our rotation times, how do we do this? Uh, <laughs> what is radians to uh, degrees? It's rotation uh, pi over 180. Because it's 2 pi in, is a radian, right? And 360, so if we do pi over 180, that should work. Uh, the problem is pi doesn't exist, so we're going to do 3.14 one five nine sure uh, so this is just sort of a guess but what I'm hoping will happen is not that <laughs> there we go and let's plug this in while we're here because otherwise nothing's gonna work cool and now <laughs> we should be able to actually rotate this and it's gonna go clockwise there we go and so this is just green and it's also uh, horizontal, which I believe is correct because now uh, it was a vertical green and the red is now negative below this. That's why you don't see anything. So this is actually negative zero or zero to negative one on the X coordinate. That's why that's all black. Uh, it's not actually, it is actually different or it should be different, uh, but it, we're just not showing it. Uh, and so if we go negative 90, we should see all red going up because we're, again, rotating by, by degrees. Cool. That makes this easier. So we have this. Now let's multiply it by something else. Uh, so we have a position. What if we plug that in? So the position should be each of the, in, inside each of the cells. Uh, and so if we plug in our position, we get something like that. That's too small. Let's increase this to like 16. And now if we start rotating this, we get negative values. Um, but we can fix that, can't we? Because what, what we end up doing is in the circle position, we actually shift everything over by 0 0.5. So the center moves from the, the corner to the middle, uh, which means everything would rotate around the center. And so I think we should be able to do something with that circle position. Maybe, let's try it. Circle position, because we're, we're taking 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 and subtracting that from the position. Uh, so we should have between 0 0.5 and negative 0 0.5. Uh, and the important thing is the center is, is 0. Uh, so our rotation matrix will actually rotate in around everything in the center, uh, which should result in something, something like this. Yeah. And so now we have all of these values kind of rotating around the, the middle 
of what we had. Cool. I don't think that's useful though, um, because we're just using that for a circle position. Uh, so that actually doesn't really get us anywhere <laughs> because the the circle position is just, we're just checking the length against that. Uh, so it, the fact that we calculate this doesn't really help, unfortunately. What I really want is each of these boundaries to be translated. Uh, and so the way we can try to get that to work, I think, is by modifying some of this stuff. Because this is, so this is our cell division. That's too, too late. I think what we want is to take this cell position and skew that. But is that going to work either? Eh, that might not. Uh, but let's let's give it a shot and see what see what this looks like, just to kind of get our heads around things. Uh, because a lot of this, at least for me, is just I want to see what this looks like, so I kind of have a better idea. Okay. So that's just changing our our cells position. Uh, so this will be the the UV lookup that we're using or passing into our our texture. Uh, that's not particularly handy. Um, so this, I think, is where we want to play with. Up here. Because this original position is actually dividing things into the cells. So what this is doing is increasing things, uh, rounding it, and then scaling it back down. What we want, I think, is before scaling things down to rotate that. Does that make sense? That might not make sense, but I'm going to try it. <laughs> uh, so let's try drawing the position. And then in here, we will multiply our position by that. Uh, this is going to have a whole bunch of side effects. We're going to ignore them because we're actually like not drawing a lot of this stuff. Uh, but it is going to affect a whole bunch of things because we're changing the position and the position is used in this calculation and this calculation and this calculation. It's used all over the place. Uh, and so this could have a whole lot of effects like that. <laughs> and not necessarily what I was thinking was going to happen. Whoa. That's not what I expected. I don't really, uh, huh. It's cool, but it's not what we want. And we get a lot of yellow, so that's all ones. What that what yellow means in this shader is a combination of green and red, uh, which is our two vectors. And so when you see yellow, that means they're both, both one. Uh, and then like orangey things and whatever this other color are like, lime greeny things are going to be fading into that that uh all one territory that's weird that they all go to one but never go to all zero uh hmm. okay that didn't work unless What if plus, uh, that's not right. Uh, uh, let's add half of a vector just to get things. Well, actually, no. Let's do that down here. Uh, let's, let's think about this just a little bit. Uh, because at this point it's kind of a uh, guess and check and that's probably not the best thing. What we want is to skew everything so our effectively so our one vector over over in this direction our x equals one gets rotated and actually rotated. So all of these calculations need to be moved and then I think everything else can be kept to the same. So actually doing it right here makes some sense. And then if we subtract 
0 0.5. That should rotate everything around a circle instead. That's what I'm hoping. And then at the end of this, we can uh, plus equals a float 2 of 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. And maybe that will recenter things. What I'm concerned about is we're going to lose some of that information. Float 2. There we go. We lost a lot of information, it seems. There's red, there's green, and there's yellow. All right. So that's like minus 45 degrees. Here's 45 degrees. Interesting. So it's like off in in some other direction that we don't want it. Oh, why is this a plus? There we go. We were multiplying. We were going too far in one direction. There we go. So this is now a centered thing. Okay, so it it's sort of working. Um, it does look that looks cool, um, but all it's caused is now we have gradients inside of this uh, because we're actually rotating inside of the cells because the cell position is not or is uh, is changing or ha now has. Uh, a non-constant value because we rotated that constant value. So I think we may want to use our position up here. So I'm putting it up here because uh, that was too too late uh, because at, we had already calculated each of these cells I, and we wanted to do this before breaking everything into cells. Uh, and so now we can break the rotated thing into cells and we get something like this. Uh, so it's still not perfect because we get too many values. Whoa, it does look super cool though. <laughs> I almost kind of want to just keep this. Huh. So we can rotate this, uh, and everything kind of gets all skewed. Like we're getting gradients again inside of our cells. So we might need multiple rotations, actually. How would that work? <laughs> uh, so the cell position is used for calculating everything else. So well, now that we have it here, let's try removing these, those two, and see what we get. I imagine nothing great, yeah. So we get something like this. Uh, we might be able to make this work actually because we're doing that. Uh, but what we might want is to do position mod equals 1.0. Does this work? Uh, so this will take the modulus of this. So all those values that are overflowing should get cut back to where they were. That's not happening. And it also seems as we rotate things away from the, uh, the origin, their values increase here and then do something like that. And they never decrease. I think that's because we're shifting everything over I'm pretty sure that's what's, what's happening, but I'm not totally sure. Um, all I know is that mod didn't, didn't work. All right. So we have that. We need to shift everything over. We rotate everything. Uh, and so that happens. We're not getting... Uh, full cells anymore. Like inside of the actual thing, we're getting a rotation. And so this 
Well, no, this is where we're dividing things into a zero to one microspace. Oh, well, that's what's happening. We're subtracting a UV again. Uh, and so we need to multiply this in order to make everything happy. Uh, so rotation that, there we go. Uh, and so this should handle that rotation. We should now get actual cells if I did that right. Yes, awesome. Uh, and so now our cells stay relatively sane. Uh, you'll notice everything is sort of rotating around that zero, zero point. Uh, we could fix that if we wanted to by subtracting 0 0.5, uh, by float, uh, float to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, here and here. And so that should cause it to rotate in the center, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, and so that's just centering things again, just doing our, our cube matrix stuff. So every zero is the center instead of the corner. Uh, and so now, does this work? If I go back to using this albedo here, did we, did we do it? <laughs> because now we have these, uh, Rotating things, ooh. And no, no we have not, because we're we're looking things up in the rotated matrix. Uh, and that's not what we want. We want to look them up. Cell equals position. Can we divide by the matrix? I don't know if this works. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's gonna get mad at me for do, trying this, but we're gonna we're gonna do it anyway. Uh, so do that, uh, and we've shifted everything over 0 0.5, so this also probably shouldn't work, and division doesn't uh, like that. So let's create a new rotation matrix, or uh, that shouldn't shouldn't work. Does it work? Okay, that uh, we have, we have a sixteen by sixteen thing. I'm gonna increase this because I can't tell what's going on. Okay, that's a lot easier to tell what's going on. We have our cats on top, and our words on the bottom. Uh, the words should be on top, and also this is uh, the corner, uh, where or it should be in the corner. And the reason that's happening is because we shifted everything. Remember, so uh, cell position, uh, position. Or it should be this minus zero or float to 0 0.5 0 0.5 uh, again making this up so this might not work entirely uh, it still rotates but now it's centered uh, and the dots rotate so that's good so we we got like 50 percent of the way there uh, <laughs> not really sure if we're, we're headed in the right track but we can, 45 degrees is a full pro. My math is wrong. <laughs> also, it's upside down. <laughs> this isn't right at all. Uh, da, 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 da. Forty-five should be a forty-five. De there we go. It's still upside down, uh, so I've screwed something up. Maybe negatives where they shouldn't be, but uh, there we go. There's our, our cat. Uh, now we just need it so that we can rotate the pixels and not the cell position. Uh, so I don't want this to happen. I, I want the cat and the words to stay in one spot just the pixels that are being drawn to shift slightly because we're rotating the actual matrix behind them. Uh, which means I don't think we can use this cell position. Because that cell position represents where we're actually like looking things up, but that's been rotated So is there a way we can do that? 
like the the thing that's standing out to me is we can just uh, not have this happen. Um, so we, I think we can try to undo this rotation by inverting this. That should should work, or we can just redo the math. I think both should work, but we're doing matrix things, and I don't really know what, how this is going to go. So let's try inverting this and see what happens. Uh, so if we do a negative rotation, so whatever we rotate, we'll just do the opposite, and that should be fine. Counter rotation. Plug that in for the rotation there, multiply that by the position, and then subtract off however much we shifted. Uh, so these have to be, you'll notice that we're doing the subtraction afterwards. Uh, this should be an addition. Uh, and so what's happening is we have this, We first we subtract something and then we rotate it. Then we want to rotate it and add something. Uh, so we're, we're inverting those operations uh, and making sure we do them in the opposite order just so nothing gets out of hand. Uh, and so, there we go, that's sort of what I wanted. Uh, so if we do 45 degrees, the circles are now at 45 degree angles from one another. Pretty sure that's 45 degrees. That doesn't look like 45 degrees. Uh, but I can't really tell because there's so many things going on here. That looks a lot better than whatever. Um, but you sort of get the idea. We're we're getting getting close. Oh, why is ninety four? I was right the first time. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Changing my math and doubting my math when I don't need to. Forty five. Cool. Now we get a forty five degree angle matrix behind it, and that's actually causing all of our pixels to be at at forty five degree angles, and we can kind of kind of change this. It does look very trippy when we do this. Uh, and you can kind of see like the rotation in the cat of the pixels kind of going swoop. Uh, <laughs> that looks really weird. Um, all right. I, I think we're done, right? Th like this is sort of what we wanted. Uh, and hopefully that kind of gets you thinking a little bit about how matrices work. I've done a, I've done a better video on matrices that uh, works with 3D meshes and actually kind of uses those to manipulate 3D meshes. Uh, that will be in the end screen, so you can go and check that out. I would highly recommend it because that one was really fun as well. Uh, but I think we're I think we're good. Uh, it it does what I wanted it to. It's a little bit uh, we got there in a little windy path, and the code is almost certainly not optimized in any way. Uh, I wouldn't recommend necessarily you do this, but that's how you could approach something like this. Um, and hopefully it kind of gives you an insight into sort of my like visual debugging thought process because it, a lot of this was like guess and check and like take some sort of conjecture and figure out what actually happens when you take that decision. Uh, and then take what you learn from that and plug it into something new. Uh, and just keep trying things over and over and, until you get where you want. Uh, and sort of sort of following that problem solving process. Uh, so hopefully that's something that you can take and apply to your code. Not just shaders or matrices or whatever. Uh, but pretty much anything programming related. That process is going to be really helpful for you. Uh, so yeah. Hopefully, hopefully that was helpful and, and you found it interesting. If you did, uh, leave a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you really liked it and want to see more. Uh, otherwise, if you have questions or something, consider leaving a comment or dropping into our Discord. Uh, there's a link for that in the description. Uh, we're, we're happy to help you out. So yeah, thanks for joining and I'll see you in the next video. So until then, see you internet.